in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. It says, Speaking to one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Look at the scripture here. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I'm sorry. I did that. Singing and making melody in your heart. It's important that you understand that your heart has the key to your joy. Joy doesn't come because of the fact you created it. Joy has been created already. And the Bible says here, he says, make a melody, make a melody, make, make a song, and let it come out of your heart. This is the highest form of praising God. Amen. I want you to pay attention this morning. The highest form that you can God is Look at what he says in verse 20. Look at what he says here. He says, the, what, uh, Ephesians 20? Yes. He says, he said, the beast, I'm your brother. <laughs> Noah, please help me back there. He says, giving thanks always. He says, give thanks always for all things. Do you know what all things means? It means that your troubles, it means the good things, it means the ugly things, it means everything. It says, Everything. Give them praise for everything. How do you give praise to everything? Have you ever seen? Uh, uh, have you ever seen a father or a son or a mo mother and a daughter? And, and and instead of the mother teaching the value to the child about God, she she, she or the or the father to the to the son, they, 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 the daughter starts being like the mother or like the son or the, like the father, distracted not having a sense of value, not teaching that people are looking at you, and you're not being a good example, thankfulness starts to the value that you give and what's important and what's what, you, what you're thankful for. Amen. It says, give thanks. How do we give thanks? Well, it says, to sing out of your heart. To sing out of your heart. Many times our disappointments become the situation that we feel like we can't give thanks because of our situations. Listen to me. Many times God wants to turn your pain into your praise. Hey, come on, come on. Pain is not produced to hurt you. Pain was produced for God to get the glory. To see you through and to see that God will see you through every situation in your life. Can you give me an amen? amen. amen. Turning your pain into praise allows God to get the glory and say thank you in the middle of my situation. In the middle of my, of, of, of my life being good and everything being okay. Thank you. Thank you. In Psalms 97 verse 5. The word of God says, it's a simple scripture, but I love the way it says it. It says, it says this in Psalms 97 verse 5. He says, um, he says, the mounds melt like wax. The mounds melt like wax. You finish it. When I say stop, you know, you finish it. Ready? One, two, three. The mounds melt like wax. At the presence of the Lord. Ooh. This is why we praise. This is why we lift our hands up. This is why we come to church. This is why, because you teach the value to get off the certain situations. You get off the you get off of your life. Get off of the school of your life to praise God and to bring the presence. He says, the mounds melt like wax. The presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord. You know how do you bring the presence of the Lord? One way is to praise Him. Amen. To sing a melody out of your heart. Amen. To learn how to do that. This year was a year, it was a good year. Amen. Amen. Even though 
I went through a bunch of wrecks. Because in the middle of everything, I was able to see God be faithful. Amen. Amen. Have you ever seen God be faithful? Amen. Oh, come on Amen. now. Amen. See, people like, sometimes like ourselves, we don't come from a thankful place. We come from a deserted place in our life. Now, I want you to think of where you came from before you even got here. Who were you? What were you? A grateful heart is one that reminds itself that where I came from is not a place to be grateful for. And now I can see that I am grateful. That's right. Come on now. Amen. Some people don't understand that your heart condition, it was not the place that you lived or the place that you were doing or what were you doing, but your heart didn't know how to give thanks to God. Your heart didn't know how to be grateful to people. Your heart didn't just say, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Thank you, husband. Thank you, wife. Thank you, boss. Thank you, life. Your heart didn't know how to do that. You know why? Because your heart was selfish about what you feel and what you don't feel. <laughs> this is why it says that mountains, that, that the mountains will melt like wax. Your problems will melt like wax in the presence of God. Amen. Can you give me an amen? amen? When I was going through some, I went to some rough stages this week. You try to reach out to people, it seems like it's the worst thing, right? You want to call to somebody to meet up to. Pour it out, you know. You need to lay hands on me, but sometimes it's just God wanting to speak to you. Amen. In Isaiah 49, verse 19, he told me this. And I want to go to the TPT really fast. Um, it, it says, What did I, uh, it says, Behold, I will do a new thing now, it shall spring forth. The Lord told me this old time scripture. And he says, son, I'm going to do a new thing. I told the leaders, some of the leaders, I said, get ready because God's going to do a new thing in each one of us. Some of you might not be in leadership this next year. Some, of, some people might be replaced and might people not come. Not replaced in a bad way, but the truth is, is maybe they're not. But I'm going to be this. The Lord says, I'm doing a new thing. Wow. I'm doing a new thing. He says, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? No, the scripture saying, you need to know it, that I'm doing a new thing. If you don't recognize that he's doing a new thing, that the new thing will never come to pass. You can't, I can't sit there and say, look at all the thousands of dollars that I spent this year on reps. Look at all my life. How many fights I got with my wife or my husband. Look at all my life. Man, we've been broke all year. You've got to believe that there's something new wanting to spring up. Amen. you got to speak to the plant. And even though the Bible says that Jesus was on the way to the temple and he saw a fig tree. That's right. And a fig tree was a sense, this fig tree looked green. It looked good. Have you ever seen some trees that look luscious? Wow, look at that apple. It looks so good. Jesus was passing by, and that tree in the Greek says it looked luscious. It looked the word attracting. And Peter said, I'm going to go pull a fig out of that fig tree. When he got close to it, there was no figs. Why did this happen? Is because the tree took the juice and the nutrition of the ground and he put them in the leaf instead of what it's supposed to produce. Mm -hmm. Some people look good, Come on. but their heart is really ugly. Oh my. Look at me. I want you to pay attention and give me your attention this morning. Many people have a tendency that their heart is ugly. They say that your friend, that they'll turn around and go talk about you. Oh, come on now. 
Have you ever had friends talk about you? Amen. It hurts. Amen. Especially when they come back and tell you, yeah, they said this, this, and this, and that. Have you ever been there before? Amen. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't expect that out of you. You're laughing at me now. You're, you're, I'm a joke to you now. And I'm your friend, though. I'm supposed to be your friend. That hurts. And you got to see that something new is going to spring up. You got to know it. He says, you got to believe it inside of you. You got to know it that something new is going to come out of this. I won't even make you roll in the wilderness. I love that because in the midst of your problems and your situations, he says, it's, it's dry, it's dead, but I'm going to make a road in the middle of these problems. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Every day of this week, it was just one of those weeks. And I'm still here preaching this message. Hey, come on now. Come on. You know what the enemy would like for me to do? Ball up in a little ball of depression and go home and just go in there. Yeah. Have you ever seen an insensitive person? Mm -hmm. So all about themselves. Yeah. It's me or my who I love, my little corner, forget everybody else. Right. People that when God starts doing something, God starts sending people to your life to take you out of the desert. Amen. Have you ever, I saw a movie one time of a soldier, I think I preached this before, where this guy comes and brings some water to this man that's in the desert because he's in a landmine. Yeah. Oh. Did I see that movie? Remember that movie? And he couldn't move, but that guy comes and sends him, and he can't move, and he sends him, and he takes him. Man, I thank God for the people, when you're in a landmine, you can't move, it seems like, man, I, I tried moving, I tried this, I tried that, I'm, try, I'm praising God, but it seems I can't move, and then somebody brings you water in the middle of your desert to say, there's a way out of this. Amen. There's hope. God is good. God can see you through whatever you're going through. Can you give me an amen? amen. Come on, look at somebody and say, there's hope in your situation. There's hope in your situation. There's hope in your situation. This is the way it came out. Look at what happens here in a very beautiful prayer, the prayer of Jabez. In, in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, look at what happens here. He says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called him. His name called Jabez, saying, because I bore him pain. Imagine being born and your name is pain. <laughs> You just caused me pain. <laughs> Have you ever gone through that before? Amen. Oh, come on now. Amen. You're like, yeah, yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Man, you were supposed to be a blessed child. I, I, I presented you. Weren't you supposed to be a good? But my God, you've caused me some pain. And Jabez was in a place, and his name was pain. Imagine, you're a pain in the butt. Have you ever heard that comment? Like, my God, you're just a pain. It's like, you keep on causing me grief. And Jabez is in this position. And he refuses to identify himself by what people call him. Don't let labels stay on you. Amen. People have labeled me all my life as a pastor. As the life of a pastor labeled me. You're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. You're radical, you're, you're not the good. You're this, you're that. You hurt me, you put this, you put that. Imagine all the people that I have to deal with and all the people that talk about me. Jesus. I know what it feels to be put, for people to put jackets on you. They look at you a certain way. And it hurts. But you know what Jameson? said? I'm not allow you, you're way of being painful towards my life. But you're putting your jacket, you're, you're, you're attaching to me. I'm not allowing it to hurt me. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God, they want me to speak to you. Come on. That's good word. You know what? If you don't come to church. Come on. You gotta come for God to speak to you. That's right. You can fix your problems in the church. Yeah. Through the word of God. 
That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. If you don't come to church, then my friend, you can't understand. Because in the middle of your pain, listen to me. They'll bring you water, but you just drink the water and you want more water. And God says, listen, I don't want you to stay in the desert. I'm taking you out. And Jacob says, I don't want you to be a person of pain. Amen. Have you ever had pain after pain after pain? It's like, my God, is there a God that even is real? You need to start questioning God. There's people that start questioning God. They say, is God even real? He hasn't showed up for, I mean, my God. There's this and that. Where is God at? And you start doubting God, and that's what the enemy loves for you to do, to doubt that there's a God in your life. Wow. There's people that put themselves in positions, and they start saying to themselves, man, I, 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 I'm afraid. I'm going to right watch. I'm going to do this. This is happening to me. And you, because you think of yourself, you're calling out the pain in your life, that's what becomes of it. Amen, amen. I told the brothers, stop saying you're going to get in that. Stop saying that it just only happens to me. It only happens to me. Stop saying that because you're confessing evil to your life. you got to start declaring that I'm not a son or a daughter of pain. I am a blessed woman of God. I'm a blessed man of God. Stop declaring things that you're not. I'm going to say, look, it runs in my family. No, what runs in my family doesn't belong part of my life. My children will serve God. My life will not be the way it was. Can you give it? Even though people become evil, God is still good in my life. Amen. 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 My God. They said, we're supposed to be in church. We're not supposed to get hurt. Ooh, come on. <laughs> I was supposed to go visit them. Whether it's in the church or not. It could happen at your house. It could happen at a restaurant. Evilness comes just to throw. You know that certain conversations you're not supposed to say to that person, but yet you go just to smite the snake bite. If I know that Robert talked about Mario, I'm not going to go tell Mario, Mario, Robert just don't like you, brother. Robert didn't bite him. I bit him because I was the bridge to, for the snake bite. I'm not going to be mad at Robert. I'm going to be mad at who gave me the bridge. Why did you allow that to cross over to my life? I really don't care to hear that. Amen. And there's a lot of people in church today that are very emotional with conversations and your bridges for the sake of Bible. Wow. It just don't happen in church. It happens at jobs. You think you have a good job? Wait. Wait until they get to know you start getting to know people. Right. It happens in your own family with your own children. I didn't expect this out of you. Why'd you hurt me like this? You used to have a good friend and, and you gave that friend everything. You blessed that friend just to turn around and backstab you to hurt you. And that's what's happening in Jabez's life. He's a, he, he, his life is a cause of pain like Man, we, 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 how can you? And yet, this is the attachment of the mother put upon him. And in verse 10, in verse 10, Jabez says, I'm going to turn this around. I'm not this person. And Jabez called on the God. Listen to me. Listen to me. The greatest way to edify and to give God thanks is to praise and to call on to God. You can't allow yourself, point number one, is you can't allow yourself to go to yourself. Look at your neighbor and tell him, this is not a time to sleep. Man. <laughs> this is why I can't get a thank you from you, man. I've been your wife for all these years, and you have not, not one time came and said, you know, I love you, love. Thank you for everything you are in my life. Why? Because you're always asleep. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Man. You got to learn that. You, gotta, you can't come to yourself to heal yourself. You can't go to a Zuma dance and say, I'm going to zoom it out. <laughs> can't do that. I'm not going to go pump iron to pump it out of me. These are things you can't do. You can't go get distracted. I'm going to go work extra hours just because I got I to gotta go do this. Stop doing what you think that relaxes you. I was seeing a movie about a guy that created the sense of, uh, what's it called, uh, um, 
me meditation or I mean, yoga. It's, huh? oh. yoga. He says, come and release your problems. I can imagine me as a Mexican, you know. <laughs> oh, no. That was my yoga. Come on, man. And then he said, meditate in your inner being and be touched. Some fool, if I, if I didn't meditate in my inner being, I'll kill you. Your inner being is the worst thing that you could ever reach out to because people think that you could heal. It's all in you. They're not talking about Christ in you. They're talking about you, the universe. You have the power. Your mind has the power to heal you. And so they start developing themselves to beat themselves. Yeah. So they go get distracted with, with toys, new toys. And they get distracted with a new house and a new car and a new this. They get distracted everywhere else. They get distracted with a beer bottle or the wine bottle. Come on now. Because you're miserable inside. And here David says, I call it on to you, God. You're the reason I'm calling on to you. Oh. And then he said this. Oh, that you would. Bless me. Oh, that you would. Bless me. Bless me. Jabez said, bless me. But the truth is, you got the right to say, thank you for I am blessed. That's right. Thank you for blessing me. You got to turn your pain into the sense of a blessing and say, thank you for blessing me. Indeed, and enlarge my territory. Come on, say it with me. One, two, three. Enlarge my territory. Say it again. Enlarge my territory. He says, enlarge my territory, Lord, and bless me. Enlarge my mentality of the way I see things in life. Enlarge my, my territory. Allow me to be able to shine in you. Amen. I want everybody to know that it's you. Amen. Not me, it's you. You are the reason why I am here. You are the reason why I'm preaching. You are the reason why I'm thankful for my marriage. I'm thankful for my children. You're the reason why I'm still alive. You're the reason why. Amen. You're the reason why. You're the reason why, and when a mother or a woman doesn't understand that God is first, and they put the relationships of marriage and children first, and jobs first, and you go do other things first, you lose the connection. You lose what God is. I tell people, you're, you know, I feel miserable because you haven't spent time with God. You know why you're miserable? Because you're trying to heal your inner, your inner body by your mind. You're a thinker, so you think it out of your life. You try to figure out the problem and then say, okay, it's done. You can't do God's job. Right. That's right. That's right. You're not powerful enough to do God's job. You've been doing God's job for too long. You oh, try so to well. think your way out of your life. You're your own God. And the truth is, is that here David says, you're my God. Enlarge, thank you for blessing me. Enlarge my territory. And he says that your hand would be with me. I thank God that his hand has been with me this year. Can you give an amen? amen? I thank God that I've made it out of every problem in Jesus' name. I thank God that I was able to settle the situation between me and my wife or, or, or your husband and yourself. I thank God that I get the strength to go through all the drama that comes to me. Some people say, why do people come to us to tell us all the problems of the church? Because you're a magnet, you're a hornet nest, and you put up with it. Come on, you're an attraction to messes. Because that's what your spirit represents. Wow. Why do people follow people that they know that they could open up to? I wonder why. Have you been a person that have allowed people and their job to come in to tell you you're a trash can? You can't take your stuff to somebody, a leader or somebody. You gotta learn how to take it to God. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Ronnie, well, this and this and this and this and that. Take it to God. Amen. 
Come on, look at your neighbor and say, take it to God. Take it to God. Take it to God. Now, situations you can't fix and you need a counselor, that's different. But the truth is, is that there's situations constantly in your life. Every day you don't like somebody. Well, this leader disrespected me, this person. Did. Who cares? Thank God, for God is good. Can you give me an amen? Yes, maybe that leader has been the way he is. But guess what? God put that leader there. We might be not a good might maybe be a little Torah family, but this is our family, baby. Give me an amen. We came from humble beginnings to nothing to where we are today, my friend. I believe we have the best church in California, in the world. I believe we have a good word in this church. And I thank God for the place that I belong. Look at your name and tell them, do you thank God for the place you belong? Are you thankful for the people that help you get where you're at today? Why do you have peace? Do you, did you create peace? Did you see yourself out of the pit and help yourself? No. Somebody had to pull the rope there and somebody pulled you out. Don't forget something that Pastor George told me. He said, he goes, you're going to be a successful pastor. He told me this when I left. When, well, I didn't leave, but I got blessed out. He told me this. You're going to be a successful pastor. He goes, don't forget where you come from. That's right. That's all I ask you. Don't forget where you come Amen. from. Amen. Don't forget about your people. Don't forget about where you came from. Don't forget about what, where, where you came out of. And I said, man, I said, I don't just thank God for where I came out of, but I brought my pastors here. And I said, I'm thankful for what you've done all my life. And you give me amen. And I'm able to thank them and I appreciate them for what they did. I would not be here or, all right, let's put the call inside. I would not have this mm. if I didn't have an intermediate, a person in the middle of us. Mm. And I would have choked her out. Boy. Oh, she was going to choke me out. One until she's more dangerous than myself. My God, I thought, that, I thought I had, you know, ump in me. No, she's worse. That's your mark. I don't know if I was going to choke her out or not. It's, it's, we both came from the same town. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's evil. There's evilness. I thank God I still have, I'm still married 22 years later. Amen. I thank God that I'm still sitting in the church today. I thank God that I'm still preaching a message on Thanksgiving and saying, man, my family is here and well. We're good. God is still good. Can you give me an amen? I lost a little bit of hair. I bet I'm getting it around the corner. Can you give me an amen? I might have a little bit of gray hair here and there. Hey, I'm getting it around. I'm just painting and buy a bottle now. Can you give me an amen? God is good. Can you give me an amen? And this is what he says, is that your hand would, would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, keep me from the people that are going to hurt me. False friends. Yeah. Amen. 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 Keep me from false friends, false church members, false people that hurt me. Amen. Not one day in my life I said I want to be a pastor so I could get paid. What I do here, when I get up every morning to seek the Lord for the church, to give the word to the church, I don't, don't, nobody pays me. The church don't give me. I've been blessed. I don't say, I want to get up today so I can get paid on Monday. I didn't start the church for that. I got up and I pray and I seek the Lord and I find revelation and word for you. You know why? You know why? Because that's what God told me to do. Amen. Without it or with it, whether they have it or not, I continue to be what I need to be. Amen. It's not going to stop me. Amen. I, I know who I am. Can you give me an amen? Amen. And some people don't know who they are. Their identity is others. Your identity is other person. You put your key in your identity on somebody else. You go talk a sad story, but you don't even know the full story. You don't give a right to hear the other side of the story before you judge the story. And you're already talking. You're already making moves. You're already helping people that hurt other people, and you're accomplished with that.
Have you ever been part of somebody that hurt you, but yet the person that hurt them, you're their friend too, and yet you, instead of you correcting them, say, that's not right, you need to do things right, you need to say thank you, appreciate that they kept you, appreciate that you lived with them, appreciate that they did help you for the seasons that they helped you, appreciate them, thank God for them, and instead of teaching people, you say, yeah, you can come over here with me. And that makes an accomplice to the sense of hurting over hurting and instead of putting a stop to it and say, do things right, brother. Do things right, sister. Stop hurting people. Stop causing pain to people. Stop hurting others. Have you ever tripped out on how somebody says, I love you, but the same person that they love, they cause pain to? Have you ever seen that before? It's like, how can I cause pain to the person that I love? He says, that I may not cause pain, he said. Say it. Say it with me. That I may not cause pain. He said, I don't want to cause pain to people. My name is pain. And I don't want to be causing pain to other people. I don't want to cause pain to you. I don't want to cause pain to you. I don't want to cause pain to people. I want to be free. I want to love. I want to be able to be a blessing to others. Amen. Can you give it amen? Amen. I don't want to be pain. Jacob said, I don't want to cause pain no more. So how do I know not cause pain? He says, find a melody in your heart. Mm. You can't cause pain. Listen to me. You causing pain to people is you, you showing your misery to that, your misery, and you're giving it to that person. Here, here's my pain. And you go, hear all their pain. And then you are not being negative because they poured out your, their pain onto you. Have you ever seen that before? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? Jabez comes and he says, I don't want to cause pain no more. You know why he didn't cause pain no more? You didn't want to, didn't want to cause pain no more? Because he said, God, I am your child. I don't want them to see me that way no more. I don't want them to see me that way no more. This is why it's very important that you understand that when you put God first, and you start praising God, God starts moving through your life. I don't want to be a person that just allows me to be happy, but I really want to live out joy. I want to just not just go along with the thing. I don't want to go along with life. I don't want to go along with the lunch. And yet you know and I know that you're a hypocrite towards me, and I'm a hypocrite towards you. Why? Because no truth is being said. Why? Because you don't want to be truthful to me, and you don't want to talk the truth. So you just say, ah, everything's good. <laughs> I can hear your fake laugh. Have you ever seen somebody laugh? <laughs> and everything's good. I was fake. Why are you being fake with me? Since when? Didn't I give you the rope? Didn't we pull you up? Didn't you pull me up? Didn't we help each other? Why is it now we're ruining each other's relationship? You know why? Because we're causing pain towards our way because of our feelings. Amen. My emotions. And he says, I don't want to do that. So God granted him what he requested. Amen. So God granted what he requested. People that are ungrateful, Romans 121, worship team. People that are ungrateful. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were what? Thank Thankful. You. You know what? Because they weren't thankful, you know what happened? It became what? You know in their hearts. You know what pudo is? Is that you have no source of thought inside of you. Fuel me. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm at a place in my life that I'm creating nothing good out of my mind. The thoughts that I have. But became you in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened. My friend, today, I don't want you to look green. We want you to be able to pull something out of your faith, out of your life. Amen. 
There's a lot of young adults that sit there and think that they've been controlled by their parents or controlled by family because we've been trying to teach them how to live life. But the truth of the matter is, my friend, is that you're going to learn life one way or another, with them or without them. Why? Because life will come to you in storms and rains. It comes to you in sun and shiny days. But no matter what, you need to understand that you can allow life to make you. And you've got to learn how to produce something out of you and say, listen. You can pull a fig out of me. Why I don't look too green? You know why I don't look too green? Because I put everything that God gave me unto producing something that He has given me. Amen. Come pull something out of me. What do you need? What do you need? Turkey. Turkey? Okay. A house. That's what you say, right? But to me, you know what I need? I said, won't you pull out some unforgiveness? I mean, some forgiveness out of me. Come on now. Wow. Can you pull out some joy right now? Can you pull out a little prayer for me right now? Is there a fig in there? Amen. Amen. You know, what do you mean? I mean, can I pull something out of you? What can I get? What can I get from you? I don't want something physical. I want to, I want something, I want something spiritual from you. I want you to talk to me. I want you to be open with me. I want to thank God for uh, thank God for those moments. And thank God. You gotta learn how to let it go. There was ten lepers, but the Bible says that one came back. That's right. And Luke chapter 17, 14 to 15, 14 and 15, it says that one came back. What are you thankful for? Are you thankful for the people that are around you? Are you thankful that even though the people that are around you are not perfect, but you're still thankful for them? Your pain can't roar in the middle of God's joy. Amen. Wow. This is why the Bible says, don't, you don't have to go there, but the Bible says that the run, that he, that he comes like a roaring lion, like a roaring lion. He's not a lion, he's a roar. He makes a lot of noise to distract you from being thankful. He distracts you from being grateful for what God has done. If it wasn't for somebody to step in and intervene in my life, I would literally be on death row right now. If it wasn't for somebody that stepped in, you could have probably been miserable and bitter all your life. That's right. That's right. Amen. If somebody didn't step in, you wouldn't have what you have today. Come on. I wouldn't be able to cut the umbilical cord to my son's belly, man. I wouldn't be able to cut the umbilical cord. I cut my son's umbilical cord. I guess, and I fainted, but I cut it, boy. I cut it way out before I took off on the dinner. I fainted, right? Because... I wouldn't even know what that feels like. I wouldn't even know to see something more. Why? Because I wasn't there for my first child. Why? Because I was messed up. I was all tore up. I wouldn't be able to have the conviction to come to church. What, what style, what lifestyle do you have? Some people have a... The, 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 give, give me the... Sam. Some people have a sense of being cold in their life. You're cold, man. Have you ever heard the statement, you're cold-blooded? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that statement, you're cold-blooded, man? You're cold. You know what they're saying is that your heart's cold. You really have no blood flowing through your body. You're cold-blooded towards your wife. You're cold-blooded. You know it's Thanksgiving, but you're going to cause a fight so that way you won't have Thanksgiving. I'm a professional at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a professional at that. The devil understood that even in the world, I knew that that's not my name. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's my, not my name. That's not my name. I'm not just whatever you call it. And I'm going to roll a tur turkey before for 13 years. I've been rolling turkeys. And you know what? I'm going to roll a turkey. This is what people do in church. You're cold. You're cold. You say, love me. Show some compassion. Hey, come and talk to me, man. I gave birth to you. Have some type of respect. Have some type of respect. And guess what, though? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I've noticed. I've noticed that when you don't give some type of respect, your children will start giving respect to you. They'll come and on your birthday and say, at least say a thing. Happy birthday. You're a few. They ain't even showing up for nothing. You're having your cold. Why are you so cold? A lot of parents that are cold. A lot of parents are hurt. You know why? Because their children are cold. But are you cold yourself? 
culture? Your culture? You ain't gonna have for, for Thanksgiving a cold turkey. What are they? I'm gonna go buy a dinner like Patty said. I'm gonna go out there since. You do for days here. I'm going to go Iversons. Hmm? I'm going to go and have and buy something and guess what? I'm going to eat it, me and my chicken and my little movie and my little Netflix and leave me alone in my room because I don't know how to sit down at the table and have dinner and say, you know what? You know what? You know what, Daddy? Thank you, man. Thank you for being there. You know what, Mom? You know what? Uh, you know what, honey? I appreciate you. Rosie, come up here. Come up here. Come, come on my preaching. I know, I mean, come on, my preaching. I know that Unique is embarrassed to come up. So she come and join my family. I mean, I don't want to embarrass her. Amen. So she won't be later on when she grows up. She goes, well, you called me up there, and I didn't really like that. I want to avoid those hurts in the future. You know, my kids talking about me, right? So, so I'm a G, and I don't know, Pastor Mark, you want to join my family? You want to join my family? Thank you, Pastor Mark. Theo, you want to join my family? Tore up and get out to the right there and I'll give you this one. Right? When they were doing the play, you know what I noticed? That they were all colder playing the play. It was a play. It was cold. You know what real is? I'm gonna show you what real is. Because in that play, you can say, well, I want to thank you, honey. You should have been even thankful. You were not thankful. You could hear it in your voice. Have you ever heard it in the voice? Like, okay, it's the pattern. We got to do it. We got to say thank you right now. <laughs> and, and, and give me a microphone really fast, Brother Robert, because you came in screaming in the service right here earlier, man. I know you came from the field of the team. <laughs> Bro, won't you have your wife sit next to you? Why won't you have your wife sit next to you? Why won't the ministers have their wife sit next to you? Why won't you be an example to be able to have your family next to you? Let's, let's do this really fast. Let's do this really fast. Would you get deal? Come on, we need to already appreciate I just want to thank God, first of all, for my salvation. And most importantly, for this season, uh, I look around this table and I see uh, the growth. I've seen, uh, I've been here 13 years. And uh, I want to thank you, Pastor Mike, for, um, for stretching out that rope, like you said. And for for being a friend. For showing me how to be a, a father to my kids. Uh, for being able to demonstrate love to my kids. For teaching the value of cooking. The only time I ever cook. It's Thanksgiving. I cook everything. <clears throat> and we sit around and we're, we share the gratefulness. Um, we've come a long ways. And it's those values that, that were installed in us that I'm grateful for. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. I mean, I, I, I'm really grateful, first of all, for another life. You know, um, being able to be alive right now and enjoy the, our family and you know, our pastors are able to sit on this table. We see stability, you know, uh, what God has been doing in our ministry. Uh, I know uh, Pastor Mike, Pastor Rosie, and, you know, we've come a long way. And then I see G here on the table, and I know that's, you know, going to extend another, uh, another more, more many more years of this ministry. And I'm just grateful for everything that God has been doing. Um, I'm really grateful that God has sustained our church, our ministry. Um, you know, it's true, there's no lie. We've been through a lot, um, good and bad. But overall, you know, we, uh, for the love of God, we have uh, really acknowledged to hang on to the good and um, leave the bad, the bad alone. But we survived many, many, many storms. And I really believe because of the foundation that God has even, uh, you know, Pastor Mike, I know we say it a lot, Pastor Mike, but it's also Pastor Rosie, you know, and uh, this foundation of this ministry is strong. You know, the Bible says, you know, that uh, the winds and storms are going to come to, to build your foundation on the rock, not on the sand. And I really believe everything that we've been through, you know, it's been part of building on the rock. And that's why we're still here, you know, we're able to enjoy our families. Um, one thing um, I'm grateful for is that I have um, really uh, done is I had told myself um, 
about six months ago that I would never argue with my pastor, you know, and um, because I know it hurts him. And I, I, I fulfill, I've been fulfilling that, you know, and um, because I love him, you know. <laughs> I mean, we, we, love, we all love Pastor Mike, but, you know, Pastor Mike, you, me and him are a little bit different. I could consider myself a little bit different, you know, but, you know, I have a lot of love for you. I have a lot of love for Pastor Rosie. You know, I'll back you guys up. You know, Brother Theo, you know, and uh, beautiful family. And, and I also love cooking also, you know, and, and the valley that came from right here. I might not be the 
best son, daughter, table. And I know my mom I, or my dad are not the best marriage in the house. You know what? Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him. God, nor were thankful. Let me keep you futile in their thoughts. You know why you can't produce success? Because you forget. His gratitude for his wife. You want to come over here? They're like unique. Like, don't come here. <laughs> and in his manners, give him a check. Give him a check. And this, my friend, is what thankfulness it brings back to you. It brings you to say, you know what? Thank you. You know what? Instead of having. Grab somebody right now, grab your family, grab somebody in your life, and I want you to... 